Five people allegedly jumping ship. Is this an alleged jump? Is this a real jump? Who are they? Where have they gone? Well, I understand that um, it's not an alleged jump. It's a real jump. Um, and I understand it's in the, the Grandy area. And, um, you know, these are people, you know, you will find that in the political systems that we have that, you know, people will not be happy that they, and, and I understand that they were not chosen by the party that they represented over the last few years. And they felt um, robbed a little bit, robbed, robbed the wrong way. And um, they decided to take the opportunity to align themselves with other political parties that they feel they may have an opportunity to contribute, continue contributing to society with. Um, you know, we are in a system where people are choosing, um, political parties are choosing their candidates, and they are choosing candidates that they feel best represent them, best represent them, their philosophy, what they are looking for, um, for representation for their people. But you're going to find that there are going to be those that are dis disenchanted. And remember a few weeks ago I was telling you that we needed to talk about proper communication within the political system as a whole. And the same goes for political parties. And, you know, I, I was telling uh, my co the, our colleagues in the, in the conference room just now that, you know, one thing about the PNM, the PNM tells you, you show up at Bali's house, before you enter the screening committee, they say, here what? Do, do, do what's the screen? They give you a call and say, yeah, what about now? Step down, relax, and we'll deal with you after. And, you know, just, that's how the PNM deals with things. And, you know, that's why they've been able to be an institution for how many years? Since 1956. Um, you know, and you find that the, the UNC continues to have um, little struggles as they go, go along. And, there, you know, there was that, that debacle of a young man talking um, a few weeks ago. Um, he screened and was successfully um, told that he got this nod for Malabar South and then showed up at their convention um, and re was ready to take the stage only for someone else's name to be called. And you see those little um, situations, you know, they cast doubt on people, they cast doubt on people's abilities and they, 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 they feel that they robbed the wrong way and their loyalties have been taken advantage of and those are things that we need to be very mindful of as political parties across the board. And, you know, they need to be able to express to people, you know, whether they should or should not screen, whether they will or will not be successful. But give a little people a little explanation because it's like if you're interviewing for a job. I mean, you don't want to know that you got the job and then when you show up for work, somebody else has been um, hired over you without an explanation. But it's going to be an interesting season. Trinidadians and Tobagonians are like, love a little political bacchanal and you know, we could look forward to that going forward into November 28th. I think at the end of the day, people are going to be taking it down to the bare grassroots level that it's going to come down to, to party. Um, you know, we need to have more emphasis on a true r meaning of local government. And I think that will stem from, you know, not just um, proportional representation for an older man, but real local government reform. And, you know, Re-assessing um, the, the the role and functions of a local government councillor, as well as looking at it from a public sector point of view, and public sector reform is much needed in this country, and I think it's going to also assist the local government councillors and the go local government system. But I really think it's going to come down to bare grassroots and back to the base because not many people vote. Um, at local government elections. We've but even though you're saying that not many people vote, it seems as though the visibility of local government elections has risen. So when you talk about we love a little election, Bacchanal, it seems as though the Bacchanal is, the, 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 the amount of Bacchanal that happens with regard to <laughs> local government elections is, is rising. What, what, what do you think are some of the causes for that? Well, you see, people looking for representation. At the end of the day, it comes down to local government representatives are really there to meet the needs of the constituents at a different level. And it's, you know, at a localized area, at a localized level, which means that you are basically looking at the needs of the, and the deficiencies that exist within these different burgesses. And it's, you know, you have local government there to assist central government. And you want representation from people who are easily accessible. So you, there's an issue of flooding, there's an issue of drainage, there's an issue of public health um, you know, deficiencies. 
those people can step in and raise awareness to the different persons within the burgesses that carry those responsibility and when the matter gets to a level that needs an intervention. So it's really like a, you know, you're brokering between the people and central government as well. I also see it as a training ground for local government, for, for, for future politicians. I mean, when you look at the diaspora, um, you know, many people have come out, many leaders have come out of the local government um, system. Mrs. Bistessa was once an alderman, Dr. Rambachan was once mayor, um, Khadija Amin was once uh, chairman and councillor, um, Faris al Rawi, attorney general, was once an alderman, you know, so Daryl Smith was. So it's just graduation, there's training ground. You know, you get an opportunity to get a taste of what is required of you as a representative of the people at a localized area, at a localized level. And then you, you, know, you build your profile and you build your, your, your abilities and, and capabilities to graduate into the central government level. And, and, speak out, and, and speaking about building profiles, social media profiles, people are able to create a lot more content. How has the role from local government representation changed because of people's ability to access greater channels of media. If, we, if we're talking about no one has come to spray mosquitoes yes. for, for two seconds, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. need to speak to my counselor. I can just send a blast that hopefully will go viral and they deal with it like that. I know, but on top of that, uh, you don't necessarily need to make a call. Sometimes you have a local government representative on Facebook as your friend, and you can send an, a message to him and say, hey, so by so is the case, come down and look at it. Are we having some issues? And you know, I'll tell you, a friend of mine said to me the other day that they had an issue with, um, I believe it was mosquitoes, and um, they were not getting the, the, the assistance that they required. And you're right, they posted it on Facebook, and within a matter of days, the matter was dealt with because the representatives were able to recognize what the problem was and reach out to the person. I mean, social media has helped um, both as an information provider and as a campaign booster. Um, you know, we will look forward, I, as I see on my Facebook wall, the, 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 the campaigning has started, and um, you know, people were just getting, re were just waiting for the date to be called, for the race to, let to literally start, and it has started. Um, you know, what we need to look forward to is, I will say to all local government um, candidates, that you really need to put your best foot forward. And Trinidad and Tobago is hungry for proper representation. And you know, when you go out there to meet the people and you make promises, make promises that you can keep and not promises that too many promises are broken, bottom line. And you know, don't let, just let them see you at this p p p juncture. Let them see you throughout your career and the, the next three years when you are elected. And those who are not successful, my advice to them would be, do not just drop off the face of the earth. You know, maintain your abilities, maintain your, your networking, because you can assist those that are elected by assisting the ones who are, those people who are around you who are not heard or seen, you know. So it's really, you need everybody to come together. You need everybody to come together at the end of the day. Um, you know, I think people are also frustrated with our political system. You need, we need to go out there and talk issues, and bring solutions, make recommendations. There are many young people that are going up for local government elections. They should not just stain themselves by having the rhetoric of the old politicians, the ones that we call dinosaurs that need to go home. Um, bring something fresh to the table. Let people see you for who you are and what you're worth. As young people, you need to go out there, um, put your best foot forward, make promises. I must continue to reiterate that. Make promises that you can keep. And when you have been elected, say thank you to those that helped you along the way. I mean, it's always good to be gracious. People respect gracious politicians. Um, have a heart. Um, not just make every issue a problem because not every issue is a problem. There are easy solutions for problems and for small problems. But how know? easy is it to bring some of that new energy that you're speaking about to the table when you find that things are basically entrenched? And I, I further ask the question, what significance do new or newer parties bring to the table? You see, we are in Trinidad and Tobago have 19 political parties that are registered. Um, of the 19 political parties, they all grab um, general elections. They don't look at local government elections. And I will say we probably have about six political parties at most contesting local government elections. And for those that are not UNC or PNM, 
and we have an COP and MSJ and ILP and the new NSA. You know, you may not win a corporation, you will win a seat. And when you have an opportunity to individualize your campaign, make it about the person. The person who is running for the seat to be elected has the ability to bring the change that is required. And they say, be the change you want to be. People are elected, let's take for example, marginal seat um, candidates in the greater sphere of things. They win elections not just based on a party's um, general election campaign. They win it based on their own personal campaign that they bring to the table. And for, if you want to talk about change, local government elections allows people to see not just party but individuals and because it's in smaller areas and there is a smaller group of people voting within that particular electoral district. So there's a focus on the candidate and what candidates need to do is bring their personal touch, bring their personality, bring that newness that they represent of their own identity to the political diaspora and make that the change that they want to see instituted. Um, not just simply say, I am PNM or I am UNC and I will follow the parties. Yes, you have to follow party structure and the main campaign team of the party. Um, nobody's saying to divert from that, but make it your own. Make it what you want to be. Be the, the, the change that you want to be within your local government electoral district by bringing your own system, your own method, your own techniques, your own charisma to your campaign so that people will not just see party, which is what the chances are they're going to be voting for, but they see you. So it's really an, it's, it's really an opportunity for individual candidates to outshine the symbol by making their face and their personality the reason why people will want to vote. Going back to the, the symbol, what's the what significance of the UNC petition loss going into the season? I'll tell you something. I was against it because I felt that at the high court level, um, Justice Miradina Mora had really settled the matter. And you know, she brought the perspective that, listen, I agree that the um, process and the six to seven extension was illegal on the part of the EBC. It was wrong and it was acknowledged. And, but going forward, she couldn't see the entire elections being changed by one hour and she brought reference to different seats and the number of votes that, 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 were, um, that were received during that one hour period. And I didn't see it going any way differently by the appeal. And, you know, I think, as I said before, the opposition needs to not just be an opposition for opposing purposes. And I think what the opposition needs to do is reinvent itself and rebrand itself. There are too many allegations that has come off the political strain, I will say, of 2015 that has now been thrown into the, into the UNC's camp and the opposition's camp that they are unable to defend or they're unable to correct or to make right or to bring facts that will not keep that stigma. And people are looking, if the UNC, the UNC needs to really focus on what it, its past, its present, and what it wants for its future. And the membership of the UNC has to make a decision sooner or later where they want to go. Because if we continue doing things the same old way in a new political, in a new modern political system that we are in, in terms of a 21st century thinking world, um, we're going to find ourselves being backward. And they may find themselves having to either compete with new upcoming parties that have bring a freshness, bring a new newness and a new technique to the political system that may be able to rival the PNM. Or they may find the, the PNM continuously reassessing themselves, which they've done since 1956 continuously reassessing themselves and rebranding themselves to meet the demands of the 21st century voter. But with that train of thought in mind, what does the election result either way mean for the tenure of the leader of the opposition? That is going to, a lot of it, because you know we've seen in the past where leaders have lost and they've resigned, they've moved on in life, 
Um, one of them is the former Prime Minister of St. Lucia. After he lost, he didn't accept a position leader. He just demitted office. And we've seen in Trinidad and Tobago, after Mr. Manning lost the 2010 election, he also demitted office as opposition leader um, while keeping his seat. Um, there's a lot of allegations against the former administration. And there are a lot of persons whose allegations are raised against that continue to be associated with the opposition leader, which frustrates the population because in the in the absence of the or in the presence of the PNM not functioning the way they ex the population expected when they voted in twenty in twenty fifteen, they are looking towards an alternative. And if the alternative is not doing anything better, you find yourself in political stagnation. And it is going to frustrate the population. So there are two things that could happen. One, people maintain the status quo, and they deal with the, the, the lion that they know, or the devil that they have, and or they just don't vote. And what, pop, what the politicians need to understand is that that voting franchise that you and I have since 1946 has been something that people struggled for over many years. And it's a privilege and an, a, a, a right that we have that they should not take advantage of. And my, you know, I will go out on a limb here and say to the, the population, if after you've assessed your politicians, if after you've assessed your parties, if you've assessed what they've brought to the table, and if you've assessed the behavior of politicians across the board and you are not satisfied, you have the right to not vote. And if you don't think that that party or individual is worthy of your vote, then you can send a very clear message in a democratic society that we live in that I'm not happy with you and I'm not just going to vote. That's also a possibility that exists. But the opposition needs to really bring something different to the table. I was watching my news feed. I even commented on it um, in the past few days about the appointment of Senator Ramdeen. Um, many persons have raised questions about Senator Ramdeen's ability to effectively represent the party given all of the allegations that have come up against him in and out of government. And that a, a new appointment to the Senate would have given, a, a right appointment to the Senate would have given the UNC an oomph that the country is looking at them for. I mean, the resignation of Senator, um, former Senator Hadid and w moving away from the quote unquote, and no offense to him, the old, the mature, to bring in something new. If the UNC wants to make an impact and for the population to take them serious, it has to be something absolutely fresh and out of this world. And their campaign needs to be the same. There needs to be serious decisions to be made um, if the UNC is to come forward and win or do better than they did last. I think the PNM needs to find creative ways to rebrand themselves as well. They need to remove themselves and or clarify the issues surrounding um, um, AJ al Rawi with that, the whole gun issue. Um, I think our politicians are not communicating effectively. They are not reaching out to answer the questions that um, people are asking. And when you reach that point, you are going to frustrate the population. So it really comes down. I see them as being very much starting off a little bit balanced. The PNM has the edge over the UNC at this point in time. Um, the PNM has traditionally had the edge over the UNC in local government elections. Um, the PNM has been able to win a local government election while in opposition midterm of an administration, which is much to their stripes. Um, so it's going to see what the UNC can do and if they can find a way to emulate that or better it from November 28th.